What's up, .NET developers? Do you have a .NET app and you want to put it in the cloud today? Well, let's take a look at AWS Elastic Beanstalk, which is a great option for hosting .NET apps. In this video, we will learn what Elastic Beanstalk is and how we can seamlessly get our apps to the cloud right here on AWS for the .NET developer. Hey folks, Isaac Levin here with another edition of AWS for the Don developers. If you're liking the content here, be sure to like and subscribe, share with your friends. Really, really like talking about AWS and how we can use it to make Don and developers' lives better. Today, we're going to be talking about Elastic Beanstalk. If you're not familiar with Elastic Beanstalk, it is a service in AWS that allows you to host applications. But let's talk a little bit more about what exactly is Elastic Beanstalk. Like I mentioned, Elastic Beanstalk is a service for deploying and scaling web applications. With Elastic Beanstalk, you can quickly deploy and manage applications in the AWS cloud without having to learn about the infrastructure that runs those applications. Elastic Beanstalk reduces management complexity without restricting choice or control. You simply upload your application and Elastic Beanstalk automatically handles the details of capacity provisioning, load balancing, scaling, and application health monitoring. Elastic Beanstalk supports applications developed in Go, Java, .NET, Node.js, PHP, Python, and Ruby. When you deploy your application, Elastic Beanstalk builds the selected supported platform version and provisions one or more AWS resources, such as Amazon EC2 instances, to run your application. You can interact with Elastic Beanstalk by using the Elastic Beanstalk console, the AWS command line interface, which is the AWS CLI, or EB, which is a high-level CLI designed specifically for Elastic Beanstalk. You also have the ability to deploy your .NET applications to Elastic Beanstalk from Visual Studio, JetBrains Writer, Visual Studio Code, or the CLI itself. And now let's talk a little bit more about why we should be using Elastic Beanstalk. Firstly, AWS Elastic Beanstalk has seamless getting started experience. In just a matter of minutes, you can go from not having anything to having your application hosted in the cloud very, very fast. It's also highly scalable and scales based on your need and scales back down if needed. It also allows for rapid development in modern DevOps practices and also has support for multi-tenant architecture. It's also highly flexible, simplifies operations, and is very cost efficient. And I highly recommend if you want to get some more info into what exactly why we should be using, take a look at some of what our customers are doing. Definitely take a look at that and there'll be a link for that in the show notes. So what is AWS Elastic Beanstalk actually made out of? So firstly, I like to think of there's four pieces to our components for Elastic Beanstalk. The first one being application. So an Elastic Beanstalk application is a logical collection of Elastic Beanstalk components, including environments, versions, and environment configurations. In Elastic Beanstalk, an application is conceptually similar to a folder. The next part is the version of that application. So in Elastic Beanstalk, an application version refers to a specific labeled iteration of deployable code for a web application. An application version points to an Amazon Simple Store Service or S3 object that contains that deployable code, such as a .NET bin directory. An application version is part of an application. Applications can have many versions and each application version is unique. In a running environment, you can deploy any application version you already have uploaded to your application, or you can upload and immediately deploy a new application version. You might upload multiple application versions to test differences between one version of your application and another. For instance, you can do something like blue-green deployment. The next concept that I think is really important to call out is environment. An environment is a collection of AWS resources running an application version. Each environment runs only one application version at a time. However, you can run the same application version or different application versions in many environments simultaneously. When you create an environment, Elastic Beanstalk provisions the resources needed to run the application version you specified. And finally, one important concept is environment tier. So when you launch an Elastic Beanstalk environment, you first choose an environment tier. The environment tier designates the type of application the environment runs and determines what resources Elastic Beanstalk provisions to support it. An application that serves HTTP requests can run in a web server environment tier, whereas a background environment process that pulls tasks from Amazon Simple Queue Service, or SQS Queue, would run in a worker environment tier. One also, some of the important things to call out is an environment configuration identifies a collection of parameters and settings that define how an environment and its associated resources behave. When you update an environment's configuration settings, Elastic Beanstalk automatically applies the changes to existing services or deletes and deploys new resources, depending on the type of change. 
And finally, you have saved configuration. So a saved configuration is a template that you can use as a starting point for creating unique environment configurations. You can create and modify saved configurations and apply them to environments using the Elastic Beanstalk console, the Elastic Beanstalk CLI, the AWS CLI, or the API. The API and the AWS CLI refer to saved configurations as configuration templates. And the last thing that I'd like to talk about as it pertains to concepts for Elastic Beanstalk is the platform. A platform is a combination of an operating system, programming language runtime, web server, application server, and Elastic Beanstalk components. You design and target your web applications to a platform. Elastic Beanstalk provides a variety of platforms on which you can build your applications. For instance, .NET applications running on Windows or .NET Core applications or .NET 6 applications running on Linux. Now let's talk a little bit about what the workflow for Elastic Beanstalk is. So to use Elastic Beanstalk, you create an application. You can do that a handful of ways like I mentioned earlier. You then upload that application version in the form of an application source bundle, like a published directory from .NET uh, CLI, to Elastic Beanstalk, and then provide some information about that application. Elastic Beanstalk automatically launches an environment and creates and configures the AWS resources needed to run your code. After your environment is launched, you can then manage your environment and deploy new application versions. The following diagram illustrates the workflow of Elastic Beanstalk. After you create and deploy your application, information about the application, including metrics, events, and environment status, is available through the Elastic Beanstalk console, APIs, or command line interfaces. And as I mentioned a bit earlier, there are two types of Elastic Beanstalk environments, the web server environment and the worker environment. And let's take a look at each of them and why we would need to use them in certain scenarios. First, let's start off with the web server environment. And this diagram is really, really helpful to, to kind of identify what are all the underlying pieces that go into when you create an Elastic Beanstalk instance. So think about this. When the app first receives a request, it, a, it is Amazon Route 53, which is our routing mechanism, sends these requests to the Elastic Load Balancer. Going forward, the ELB shares the request across the EC2 instances. Every EC2 instance has their own security group. EC2 instances are all part of an auto-scaling group. In the auto-scaling group, it automatically starts additional Amazon EC2 instances to handle increased load on the application. Auto-scaling group monitors and automatically scales AWS EC2 instances based on the needs of the app, and scale-downs happen as well, part of that. So Elastic Beanstalk has this default security group, which will act as a firewall for all the EC2 instances that are inside of it. In these groups, you can also use to establish security groups for other services, for instance, the database. Now we've talked a little bit about the web server environment. Let's talk really briefly about the worker environment. For the worker environment here, Elastic Beanstalk also creates and provisions an Amazon SQSQ, if you don't already have one. When you launch a worker environment, Elastic Beanstalk installs the necessary support files for your programming language of choice and a daemon on each EC2 instance in the auto-scaling group. The daemon reads messages from an Amazon SQS queue. The daemon then sends data from each message that it reads to the web application running in the worker environment for processing. If you have multiple instances in your worker environment, each instance has its own daemon, but they all read from the Amazon SQS queue, the same one to be exact. Now let's take a look at creating an Elastic Beanstalk service and deploying a .NET application to it in Visual Studio. So we're in the AWS console. Let's go and create application in the Elastic Beanstalk section. And I'm going to provide a name for my application. So let's just call this .NET sample. I can specify some keys here. So for instance, if I want the environment to um, be different based on different applications, I can do that. So environment production. I then have the ability to specify the platform. So in this case, we have a couple of options. We have .NET Core on Linux, uh, which has uh, which runs Amazon Linux 2, and there's a couple of different platform versions, as well as .NET on Windows Server. And that's different versions of IES running on different versions of Windows Server. So let's go ahead and select .NET Core on Linux, and uh, then I have the opportunity to select an application code, which in this case, we're going to use a sample. And the next thing that it wants to do is we can actually specify some details. So if we want to add Amazon X-Ray for more telemetry, we can specify a proxy server. And there's a whole other slew of options that we can do, like adding uh, our log streaming to CloudWatch. Uh, but in this case, let's scroll down and cancel out of this. And we have the ability as well to edit other things, like instances as, as well as um, the different tiers that we're going to run. Um, it, let's scroll down and click Create App. And what this will actually do is this is going to create uh, an Elastic Beanstalk instance uh, that is running the .NET Core on Linux platform. Uh, so this does take a little bit of time, so let's fast forward a bit and uh, get to the end.
All right, so we're at the end here, and as you can see that there's a couple of uh, things that have been logged out. Uh, let's go ahead and now, okay, so now our uh, Elastic Beanstalk application and environment are configured. I can actually click on the link here and it'll take us to the sample template uh, that we selected for ASP.NET Core on Windows. And I can do some other things here. I can take a look at some of the recent events. I can then go and look at things like swapping out the environment URLs or cloning uh, different environments if I want to have different versions of that. I can specify and look at all the environments that I've created in the past. And I also have the ability to drill into the particular application. So in this case, let's go to our .NET sample application that we just created, our .NET sample environment, I'm sorry. And we can actually go and take a look at some of the configuration options that we have here. So let's actually go ahead and take a look inside of, um, let's look at an option deploying this application in Visual Studio. So now that I have my environment stood up inside of the AWS console, I can actually go into Visual Studio and deploy an application to it. So right here I have just a very simple uh, .NET 6 MVC application. So if you open up the project here, you can see that it's uh, .NET 6. And all I want to be able to do is I want to deploy this application to this new Elastic Beanstalk instance that I just created. And now I can do that, I can just right click on my project. And if I have the AWS toolkit for Visual Studio installed, I'll have this little publish to AWS button. So I can actually go ahead and click on that, publish to AWS, and then it's gonna bring up a uh, deployment tool. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna go through the different options that we have for deploying this particular application to AWS. So I can either publish it to a new target or to an existing target. And it'll actually look at the existing services and instances that I have out there. So if I can actually go into the AWS Explorer and I can open this up in Elastic Beanstalk and I have this uh, net sample app that I just created, net sample dash ENV for the environment. So I can actually deploy to that pretty simply. So I just click here and then I click publish. And it's going to ask me some information like do I want to use the uh, specific uh, default credentials and what the region is. I can actually then say don't ask this again. I've clicked yes. And then it's actually going to go through the process of z publishing this application, zipping it up, and pushing it to Elastic Beanstalk. And this does take a little bit of time. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to fast forward to when it's complete. All right, now we're all complete, and we can actually take a look at the endpoint that we have for this particular Elastic Beanstalk instance. If we click on that, it'll take us to the deployed version of our application, which, as you can see, uh, AWS loves .NET. So really exciting stuff. And that wraps up the video for AWS Elastic Beanstalk. I hope you liked it, and I hope that you could take a look at some of the stuff that we learned and some of the stuff that's in the show notes and deploy .NET app to Elastic Beanstalk today using your favorite ID of choice. So that's all we have for today. Be sure to like and subscribe and share the content you have here and tune in and see you next time for another edition of AWS for the .NET developer. Take care.